Oh, did you hit the record button for me? I did. Awesome. Thank you so very much for joining us this evening. And we are going to step through this build a vision process. Sometimes it can look like a daunting task, but actually it's pretty easy. And every slide that's in the deck that we're going to go over tonight can be found at lionsclubs.org slash NAMI, N-A-M-I. And then you click the process button and go down there under the build a vision. And there's the presentation. You click it, you can download the PowerPoint that we're going to get this evening. Also, then if, if you're not sure about what we've said, this re recording will be available, but also there's a recording from last year that's available on that North American Membership Initiative process page. As a matter of fact, there's a recording for each of the sessions, build a team, build a vision, build a plan, and build success. And although what you hear today is slightly different because it's been evolving and we've been learning from one another as we went along, the build a vision is really a great approach so that you can empower your lions and they buy in and they sell themselves on the concepts that we're involved in. And you just begin to drag traffic because they have already bought in uh, because we're using their ideas to get where we're going. So as you gather the, tonight, we're going to talk about the, an overview. We're going to talk about the district vision. We're going to talk about district goals. I'm going to talk about the next steps. What do we do after we finish gathering all this data? But before we got here, we have to decide who are we going to invite. And I'm going to suggest to you that we invite everyone in the district. Because what we have found is when you invite everyone into the district to come to your Build a Vision meeting, whether it's in person or online, as we are tonight, that you're going to have lions that show up who have never showed up to anything before. In my own district, when we were a pilot district, there was a club president that come to the meeting and he says, you know, my club has never done anything with the district before. And that he was right. I, in the 20 years that I had been involved in the leadership of my district, I'd never known this club to do anything except serve in their local community. And they did not know there was a Lions Club outside the community, but because he got a personal invitation that said, Club President Joe, will you share with us a few hours so that you can help us to build a, bit, a vision for a better tomorrow? He drove about 20 miles to come to, to our meeting that was in uh, this Two weeks ago, we had our second Build a Vision meeting in our district. And once again, we did it online and we invited everyone. We got one new club and we had two of their members who have been members for less than six weeks to come and have vital input for us to help us to shape our district. Invite everyone and everyone comes. We then need to, to be sure that we set the tone, that everyone knows that this is a safe zone. There are no crazy ideas. The crazier, the better. We're getting outside the box. We're breaking the molds. We're going to do things we've never done before. And that's okay. We're also going to tell folks that we're not going to have any of these comments like, we tried that 10 years ago and it didn't work because times have changed. We've never done it that way before. It's hereby banned from the rest of this meeting. Please don't anyone say it because we're going to have to put you in timeout. And you just make fun of everything like that, but they'll get the message. It's a safe zone. Every idea is great. And furthermore, we're going to record every idea. And so you're going to have your uh, district governor teams recording the ideas that are going to be reported out during this meeting. Tonight, we're going to con condense about a three and a half hour meeting down to about 65 to 70 minutes so that we can uh, see how that is done. Now, the first thing we're going to do after we put everybody at ease, we let everybody know that that we're going to think outside the box and we're looking for ideas that have never been tried before. And you might even toss out an idea. Uh, we want to maybe think about starting a cyber Leo club to encompass all of the homeschoolers in our district. I'd never heard that idea till someone threw it out at one of these meetings. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty good idea. And so after we've sort of set the tones and everybody knows that where we're heading, we're going to talk with them about the overview of the North American membership approach. It's necessary because of our membership trends over the last 40 years. This time we flatten the curve and this time uh, turn it up. I know with COVID, we've been trying to flatten the curve and get it to go down further. We want this curve to flatten and then start growing up because every time we bring someone into our association, we can impact a hundred more lives in our communities. 
And we have one objective, and that's to grow membership within our district. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do that by rejuvenating districts with new clubs. We're going to revitalize clubs with new members, and we're going to remotivate members with new fellowship and exciting service. Focus areas one, two, and three. And as we get toward the end, there's going to be focus area four, and that is supporting clubs and district leadership, that training. So as we're building our team, which is the next phase, and we're going to get into just a little bit before we adjourn this meeting, we're going to, to find out who wants to help us to build new clubs. Probably head that up with your district governor team because your GMT is going to be busy working with a team of visionaries that want to revitalize clubs with new members. Your GST can be involved with uh, new service and new fellowship and your GLT with supporting and training uh, Lions as they come in. We're, we're talking about that. We're answering questions. And then we get the next 30 minutes of your meeting, the next five or 10 minutes of our meeting is going to be trying to get people to begin to talk. Show them the vision statement. To be a global leader in community, uh, of community and humanitarian service. And what does that mean to you? And let people just begin to talk and express. Don't call on people because nobody likes to be put on the spot, but just get them comfortably talking. You know, a global leader is, or that to me, the most important word is community. Have that discussion for a few minutes and you're writing down ideas. And then you go to the mission and to empower volunteers to serve their communities, meet humanitarian needs, encourage peace, promote international understanding through Lions Clubs. And as you're beginning to listen, they're writing your district governor's speech for you when you go out to the clubs. Because if the people in your district are really interested in humanitarian needs, then I'm going to do some research and talk about all the different needs in the community across my district and say, you, the visionaries, told us that of our mission, humanitarian needs was the most important thing that, that we could do. And this is some of the ways that we can do it. If they, if they will tell us what they want to hear, we can connect with them because leaders are leaders by a position until they add value to the association and our lines give them permission to lead. And when they, we have permission to lead and we engage with them on a personal level, we begin to produce the results that we want. We're going to add new clubs to our association. We're going to add new members to existing clubs. We're going to retain the members we have. We're going to expand our footprint of service. This process helps you to learn how to really communicate with everyone. This is, there's no breakout rooms here. This is just a general room discussion. However, if you, if you do it online, it may be better to, to send them to breakout rooms and let them talk about it in groups of three or four and then come back and report from each room, which we'll do just shortly. After you finish this and everyone is beginning to talk and feel comfortable around one another, we're going to talk about expectations. Because as an international director, when I was invited to come out and, and speak at, at a district convention or multiple district convention, I always called and asked, what are your expectations? Because I knew what they wanted me to deliver. I could meet and exceed those expectations. And if you as a district governor and your team knows what your line of visionaries want from a district governor, then you can meet and exceed their, what they've asked you to do. And that is the exciting part of this build a vision because we're beginning to learn what they believe our job description should be. And so we're going to spend about four minutes. We're going to send everybody out in, into their own little rooms because I think it's important that we as leaders experience what a table discussion or room discussion might be like. I want you to take and introduce yourselves to those that's in your room and then answer this question. What are the top two things that you think a district governor team should do to be exceptional? Any questions? If not, let me find our breakout rooms here. And we're going to break out. You'll have to hit join to move to your room. And in about four minutes, we'll end the, uh, the discussion. So go and enjoy yourself, introduce yourself, and answer that question. And stick it down in the garbage. I think everyone has come back, and I appreciate that so very much. 
Uh, I think it's fun for us to understand the dynamics within those rooms. And what you're going to find when you're hosting your build division meeting, the group is going to start out a little quiet. And about the second or third time that they break into their groups, they're going to be very talkative. And tonight we're, we're holding it to about four minutes. But as you plan your schedule, you can send folks off into these rooms for six minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, however long that you want to, because it's your meeting and the North American membership initiative has flipped the chart where clubs and districts are at the top and our international president is at the very bottom supporting everyone above them. And so let's go to first vice district governor from 16 in Marie and ask her, what were the two things that your room identified that a district governor team should do? Um, listen to members, support, we're there to support them. Um, that was like, I think the first two things that we, that we definitely agreed on. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, we need to find out uh, their projects, what are they interested in? But again, it's the thing of, we need to listen to our members and, in, and we need to listen to them in order to support them. Absolutely. So, and again, we need to listen to them to find out what they're interested in, what mm -hmm. projects are they interested in. So, and we agreed on one thing, emails and texts are great. Technology is fantastic, but there's nothing like it when we can meet again in person and follow up with a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, because there's nothing like hearing the person. If we at least cannot see them in person, at least hearing them, hearing the hearing the voice. Because sometimes in a text or an e email, you think of you hear them talking in your mind, and the tone you set a tone, and sometimes that the tone gets it, it's not what what you you relay a different message. So a phone call is different. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Uh, and we'll move to room two and ask uh, Lion Gary Logan if he would share with us in room two what the top two uh, qualities would be for a successful district governor team. And you may have to unmute yourself if you're muted. Okay, I'm not muted. Uh, but we were introducing ourselves and, and we did talk about more of an introduction ourselves than we ever got to answering your question to be honest well and, and that's a typical lion we we always enjoy the fellowship and that helps us with retention so that is great and when you have your build a vision meeting you're going to have some tables that say we got busy talking about this and we never really got around to that but what you're going to do when when they start telling you what they were talking about is you're going to listen and write those ideas down because they are important to those lions and what's important to the visionaries that gathered is important to us because, as Table One said, we've got to listen and be reactive. So, Lion Gary, thank you for, for being honest with us. Mm -hmm. and uh, But thank you also <laughs> for enjoying yeah. the experience of being a lion. I think it's great. Room three, we're going to ask Geraldine Ray, Lion Geraldine, uh, what her table accomplished. Um, thank you, Lion Jerome. <clears throat> we introduced ourselves, but we kept it very brief. <laughs> <laughs> and we started talking about, you know, this is all about building membership out clubs within a zone or maybe not even a zone clubs that are close to each other. Uh, Gordon said, well, how do we get people to, to come to those? Uh, Let's have a fun evening. Invite new uh, members or uh, interested people. Gretchen thought, very good idea. Let's introduce them to a service project. Let's find out, uh, mm -hmm. get a, a project together and let's do it and get them involved before they even become a lion. But let's mm -hmm. uh, bring people in more in a larger group instead of specialized pinpointing a certain club. So a district governor team would be successful if they're visiting, but those visits are with groups of clubs to promote interaction and, and camaraderie. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
if that's something that that is expressed by your visionaries, then it makes your job so easy as a district governor elect because you can start doing that. And somebody says, I don't know if I like this or not. We ain't never done it that way before. <laughs> and so you say, well, that's fine. But the visionaries that met with me on February the 2nd said, this is what we should try because if we always do what we've always done, we'll always get the results we've always gotten. We're going to try some new things this year. And you're using their ideas and you're not having to sell them as your ideas. And as we move to room four, Claudia, uh, Claudio Bun Camper. Did I say that close? Yes, uh, Bun Camper, yes. Uh, uh, Cl Claudio, what, what were the top two things the district governor team should do to be successful? Well, our group, uh, after we introduced ourselves, um, it was pretty much like what we once said, communication with our members. Um, and listening to them also is very important. And one of the items that I, I, I brought is also um, being able to convince our clubs to be able to accept change. Um, I think, especially in our area, uh, change is one of uh, the, diff the difficult parts, right? You now. it's the same like you said, you know, um, you have repeated it a couple of times this evening already. Well, this didn't work yesterday or it didn't work 10 years ago and you know you stick to that and you know uh, actually uh, for me as an incoming mm -hmm. district governor mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that is one of my focus areas you know we mm -hmm. have already our team has already met mm -hmm. and already you know our, mm -hmm. our actual plans and mm -hmm. NAMI is going to be actually a very big focus area for me as a district mm -hmm. governor for our district so those two areas are very important for us yes okay well, very good. And I appreciate that. And your, your table did an excellent job of uh, bringing things to, together there. And change is important. And as we move through this process and you have this build a vision meeting, you're going to continue to tell you the, your visionaries, the people that you've invited, the 35 or 40 that show up, that we're, we're talking about doing things a little different. We're going to have some change. And you're going to define what that change is because as a leader, I'm going to le only lead in the direction that this group of volunteers wants to go. I'm not going to bang my head against the wall. You tell me where you want us to go, and I'm going to lead you there. We're going to find a path to success, and we're going to find success just shortly. And so after this, you're going to send them into, into their rooms again. And we're not going into the rooms again because we're abbreviated. And ask them what did they expect of their zone chairs. Then of the three or four meetings that I have facilitated and asked the questions and helped to, to build the vision, uh, especially during the pilot program, there was at least one person, if not half the people that says, what's a zone chair? They had no idea what a zone chair was because they hadn't seen a zone chair. Uh, they didn't know what one does. And we, had, we would take then and have a general discussion in the room about a zone chair. Uh, they're a leader of three to, to six clubs that are geographically located together. Uh, they're there to help and support those clubs. And eventually most folks would say a zone chair is sort of like a, a mini district governor to those clubs. Yes, that's what a zone chair should be. And so you break off in your tables and tell us, what would you like that zone chair to do? And most of the time they would come back and tell the same thing that uh, you've said about district governors. They want them to communicate. They want them to talk about change. They want them to listen. They want them to support their projects. They want to see them. They want to hear from them. They want them to share news of the, of the district. And so whatever they're saying, every time an idea is uh, brought up, you're writing that down. In a meeting like tonight, you've got someone assigned to write it down. If it's a live in-person meeting, in meeting, you're going to get that butcher paper and you're going to write it. And every time you fill up a page, you're going to tape it to the wall and you're going to have those all the way around the room so that everybody can visually see that their idea was important. It was so important. We've written it down and we've saved it by putting it on the wall. And it's going into the raw data that's going to help us to build a plan for success. We're also then going to ask ourselves, what do we expect of Lions Clubs? And we're going to ask this question because our visionaries are sitting there and some of them are in clubs that have 10 or 12 members. Some of them are in clubs that write a lot of checks and they haven't had a service project in the last 10 years. And they need to hear what we collectively think Alliance Club should do in order to be 
an outstanding Lions Club. And if you get 35 people in the room that are all peers to list those things out, then you just put that list together. And as you travel and you meet with clubs, you can say, listen, y'all are doing a great job. The visionary says these are the top five things that Lions Club should do. And you're hitting four out of five. This one right here, if we worked on it just a little bit, y'all would be a five-star club. And it's not the district governor telling them that they're missing a point. It's the visionaries. It's the lions that was there. And when you're speaking and you've got in you're in a club and you say, you know, Lion Jim and Lion Jane was at the meeting and this, they helped to put this list together for us. I think it's a great list. And then it's not we're telling anyone anything. It's that they're discovering for themselves what a good club should be. Does that make any sense? Yes. And so this approach is really going to help you as you move forward uh, in your career as a district governor. And is uh, how many people we served last year. This is how many people we've served today. We've retained this many members over the last three years. And this percentage of clubs are reporting our service. You can get that information by going and logging on like you were going to the Learn Center. And I know all of you know about the Learn Center because every DGE has had assignments there. But instead of going to the Learn Center, go to Insights. And when you go to Insights, then across the top, it'll have membership service, uh, LCIF, um, I think new clubs. And the, along the left-hand side, it's going to let you drill down to your district and have just your district numbers. And when you click it, it'll even give you the numbers by club. And so you can pull that out and personalize this so that you'll have the information there because our visionaries are going to help us to set district goals. Now, I will tell you that your group leaders from a halfway around the world are not familiar with the North American Membership Initiative. I'll tell you that they gave you a little booklet and they told you to write district governor goals and to put those goals into that little portal. And that's what the rest of the world needs to be doing because they're not caught up with North America yet. But what we need to be doing is we need to be letting our visionaries who we've come together at our build a vision meeting, help us to set those goals. So do your assignments so that our offshore group leaders don't get upset. And then when you have your build a vision meeting, go in and change your goals to match what your visionaries have said, because it's going to be much easier for you to carry a message of this is our goals. This is what we collectively decided than it is to go out there and say, this is my goals and I want you to buy into them. Because those that have come together and helped you set your goals during this build a vision meeting are already bought in and they're gonna help you to sell this. It's gonna be 40 people in your district who have come together to set goals, who have invested because their ideas are in there that's gonna help you to have a successful year. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to your group leaders who don't understand North American Membership Initiative, but this time next year, everyone will understand the global membership approach, which is the new name for North American Membership Initiative as we roll it out around the world. And I'm so sorry, but we're just about a year or a year and a half ahead of the rest of the world. And that I really like us being in that position. Now, you got that, you shared that data that they've all jotted it down on their paper. If you have an in-person meeting, you should encourage uh, your district to buy some of those little uh, pads and, and some pens so folks have something to write on and some things to jot down with. If you've always do what you've always done, you'll always get what we've always gotten. And I don't think we're happy about what we're getting. And I think that we can do better. And this is an opportunity for you just to have a group discussion again. What changes are needed to help us to be the best we can be? Listen, they're going to tell you what they won't change. And if they tell you what they won't change, then they're not going to fight with you. Sort of like that infant when they go to squalling about their diaper being wet and you change it, they're not going to be running all over the house. They want that diaper changed too. And so these lions who tell you what they want to change is, and you put that in your plan of action is going to help you to change it because they've told you. We want this changed in our district. And then you're no longer a change agent. You're just a motivator to encourage people to do what they've asked to be changed. This, this, uh, it's a wonderful approach, wonderful approach. 
we're going to then tell them that we're going to begin to leverage our strengths. And in the next little bit, we're going to leverage our strengths. We're going to discuss what our weaknesses are and we're going to minimize them. We're going to talk about our opportunities and we're going to seize them. And we're going to talk about our threats and we're going to try to manage them. And once again, you're introducing them to, to SWAT, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. That is a term that most of our lions are not familiar with. And we learned that from the pilot districts. And that's why we had to break it down and actually use strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Because when we talked in acronyms, everybody just looked at us with a blank stare, which is exactly what new members do when we talk in ac acronyms for, for lions and PDGs and PIDs and IPs and, and everything else. Sometimes we just need to spell it out and say it. It may take a, a few microseconds longer, but we may need to say global action team. Uh, we may need to see, say past district governor. And so we're going to go over this slide with them. And as we go into past that, then we're going to begin to talk about accomplishments. Every lion out there likes to talk about what their club has accomplished, what their district has accomplished. And this can be a group discussion too. Let everybody brag on themselves. My club, the best thing we've done in the last five years is we've hosted a, a pizza farm and we've brought every fourth grader into to the fairgrounds and we've shared with them all of the ingredients that go into pizza and for them to better understand agriculture and then gave them a slice of pizza, a carton of milk and sent them back to class. It's the most memorable day that they have. They a few folks that like to talk uh, longer than they should. So you can say in 30 seconds or in 45 seconds, uh, tell us. Everyone there will not want to share, but probably five or six or eight or 10 may and give them time to, sh to share and begin to brag because it's that foundation of the past successes that we're going to build on to have the successes of tomorrow. As we move from that, then we're going to begin to ask ourselves this very serious question. Five years from now, if a former member called to inquire about your club, what would you like to tell them about changes for the better that have been made? Is that a deep question? It is a deep question. And so I want to give this group and send you back to your rooms to talk among yourselves about what changes you'd like to be made in your club. And then we're going to get back in. Uh, we're going to debrief for a few minutes. And then that's going to give us an idea of what we need to be headed toward and promoting as district governor elects, because we're listening very well and we're, we're moving forward. I'm gonna give you four or five minutes and we're going to answer this question. What would you like to tell them about the changes with better than been made five years from now? You'll have to hit join in just a second and join your room and your discussion. And I'll see you back in about four minutes. We're back. It looks like everyone has made it back. We're back. And that is awesome. Thank you so very much. For, thank you for coming back. I appreciate that. Uh, you did, you let's didn't start give us with room two. I didn't do what? You didn't give us a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Geraldine, uh, this is a, this is a u very unique process, and, and I realize we're speeding it up, but I hope that everyone walks away understanding that it's fun, it's easy, but it's so informative. And so we're yes. going to go to room two and ask Lion Jim from Single District 10 to tell us one thing that you would like to be able to say that was different about your club than five years from now. Our oh, club move today, everybody counts. Everybody has everybody has a value to listen to. We don't rely on the head table. We talk to everybody in the club. Everybody's got a story. We want to hear it. Okay. That, that's a great goal. That is awesome. And if we move to uh, room three, uh, Gordon uh, from 5M3, Lion Gordon, what would you like to be able to tell that former member that has changed about your club that made it better? Mm -hmm. I want to, we, I, we, our group, we want to see a, a greater visibility. We want to uh, talk about what our club has done. We want to know what the, what the community 
looks back and understands about our club. You know, sometimes the lessons taught is not the lesson learned. So what are we teaching? What are we changing? Uh, and what do they see us doing? Uh, we have to reach out. Uh, here again, it's a communication issue. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's more service projects. It's being more visible. It's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that one word wraps it up pretty closely. Visibility. And Visibility. Do do that? Service projects and it, the, the talk mm -hmm. goes both ways. What you'll find as you're doing this uh, build a vision in your district and you look back at the data, you're going to find some common themes through there. And those common themes that need to be trained on and reinforced really falls to that focus area for supporting clubs and district leaders. And your GLT begins to build programs to, to help to move us in that direction. And so if this were the outcome of your build a vision meeting and that discussion, when for, focus area four got together, you'd say, what can we do then? How do we build a plan in order to be our, to help our clubs be more visible? And you begin to do the training and provide the, co the tools and the equipping so that every club begins to move in a more positive direction. I love that line, Gordon. You, you're doing a great job. And we're going to go to room four and lie in uh, Sheila Perkins. Uh, what, would, what is it that y'all would like to uh, change about your club so it's better five years uh, from now? To be more visible. Um, where I'm from, it's, it's, there's only 12 of us, but we're not as visible as the bigger clubs. Um, mm -hmm. once, once again, it's, it, you know, as we said once before, uh, we, we are starting to change to the fact that uh, no more than three years as president, no more than three years as treasurer, no more than three years as secretary, instead of some of these that's in longevities. I have, a, I have a, a club in my district that I am trying to help. Uh, the past president was in office for 25 years. Oh and, my. And he got sick. <laughs> and his kids have taken all the material and everything that belonged to that club and locked it up in their garage. <gasps> They, well, they have had a problem with um, not paying taxes because they didn't have, they didn't know they had to. The books were bad. The checking account was all screwed up. So there's been three of us from the district who have broken uh, out and, and tried to get this club back up and running so that they don't lose their charter. Awesome. That, that's, a, that's a story. And if I'm facilitating the meeting and I hear what I've heard from you, and from uh, Lion Jim, I'm going to begin to talk about visibility and how do we, what do we need to do in order to train clubs on how to be visibility, more visible, so that the, once again, the visionaries are telling you what they want, and you're only doing what your district's asking you to do. It takes so much pressure off the leader when it's a team approach. And then uh, if this situation, when this club comes up, I'd ask the group, how do you think we should handle that? Because out of that group, is a, there's going to be a lot of wisdom, that is, and someone's going to think of something that's a little different than the two or three that's working on it. So empower the group to have a greater vision together and to solve problems. I just, Lion Sheila, you are just wonderful. Thank you for, for being with us tonight, and thank you for those comments. We're going to go to Lion Pamela Williams, who was in room one, and ask her the same question. What would you like to see change? and be able to brag about five years from now? Well, uh, we have one of two things. Right now we're doing Zoom and hybrid. So in the long run, five years, be able to see them up front, cyber club if necessary, and more people getting involved. And with getting involved, we would like to have mentorships for those that are willing to receive, for officers and lions coming in and have an older lion that's been a lion a little bit, mentor them on what lionism is and what they do when they go out on service project, how to interact with the community 
to let the community know that we're here for you. That is beautiful, Ann Pam. And tell me where you're from. Which district? Uh, 18L in Georgia. In Georgia, right next door, because I'm from out North Alabama. And oh, okay. so uh, what I heard you say is if you were a member that left five years ago and I, we have that conversation, you said, what changed about our club? I can say, you know, we've brought in a lot of younger members. We've introduced them to the Learn Center. We've helped them to build resumes. We've provided them mentors. We're getting them acclimated into the community and to leadership roles. Our Lions Club is really has become a think tank. We're taking our young people out of college, bringing them into the Lions Club. We're equipping them. We're building resumes. We're helping them be successful. We're introducing them to, to people that can help them along their career path. Oh, that is beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. And as we finish this part, you also have to manage your time with, with uh, breaks because we can only do as much as our seat will allow us. And tonight we're on a fast track. And so you may have to get up and, and stretch uh, however that you want to, because it's only going to be about uh, 65 to 70 minutes. But if you're having an online meeting or in-person meeting, every hour or so, we need those bathroom breaks, we need those stretch breaks, and we need everyone engaged. And so when you get these quotes, it may be a great time to uh, read the quote, say, think about that, and we're going to take five minutes. Y'all talk about it around the refreshment table back there or uh, across the bathroom stall or whatever you want to do. And then we're going to begin to work with them and actually move into our strengths, our weaknesses, and well. And they're going to come back and they're going to tell you what you do well. And whatever you do well, you keep doing it because if it's working, mm -hmm. don't break it. Once you finish that mm -hmm. and you get them back together, you're going mm -hmm. to ask them mm -hmm. to go off and talk about what are some of our weaknesses? What can we do better? And this is so telling because as your tables report back out, whatever they tell you is important because these are the things we need to work on. Now, you're going to end up with a list of eight or 10 or 12 things that we really need to improve on. Pick the top one or two, the lowest hanging fruit that you can really make a difference on and let it be known. They said one of the, the weaknesses may be we don't think our district governor communicates enough. That's fine. You're going to over communicate for a whole year so that they can see that you identified a weakness and we've been working on that. Are we, have we been doing better? So when your first vice district governor, who is now the second vice district governor, has their build a vision meeting and someone says, you know, one of our strengths is communication. It was a weakness last year, but we worked on this as strength now, and, and that's going so well. Mm -hmm. And so you just pick out one or two things, and you improve it every year. Mm -hmm. And in five to ten years from now, you're going to be able to be in a position to uh, have uh, improved a lot of different mm -hmm. things. As you move through that, then you're going to ask about your opportunities. What are the opportunities? And they may talk about a, a, a new industry that's coming to town. They may talk about a new service opportunity in your district that, that has raised its ugly head or uh, a need that's there. Whatever those opportunities are, you let them tell you because we're going to build it into our plan in just a few minutes and we're going to seize a few of those opportunities. Once again, they're going to give you eight or 10 opportunities, mm -hmm. but we're only going to pick the one or two that we really think we can make an impact on. And we're going to continue to move forward in the same way with our threats. Mm -hmm. Really, what are our threats out there? And two years ago, when we started this pilot project, no one mentioned COVID. But it's been one of the biggest threats that we've had to face for the last year. And to be quite honest, we have done a very good job of adapting. Adapting to Zoom meetings, adapting to meetings uh, with GoToMeeting, uh, talking about hybrid meetings, serving in new ways. But they're going to talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. some of those threats. Mm -hmm. You know, that company down the road just laid off a thousand people that may impact our club and our ability to raise funds. Uh, the, the town here uh, raised some taxes and some of our people are going five miles down the road to another town where the tax uh, rate is a penny lower. And that may impact our, our club. Those things you put in there, because if we can manage it or some way find how to adapt, 
we need to adapt because lions adapt as we're moving forward. By this time in your meeting, you've got about 10 or 12 butcher papers along the wall if you're in person. You probably got five or six pages of notes if uh, you have uh, a meeting like this one. And you're continually reminding people that every idea is important. Lion Mike has been designated the uh, note taker and every idea that you've given has been reduced to writing. And we're going to type those up and send them out to every visionary so you know that your idea was but we're going to talk about new members. We're going to talk about membership satisfaction. We're going to talk about leadership support. And each of the slides have questions which lead to the group of visionaries discovering for themselves what your district needs to do. Because as a human, we would rather discover for ourselves what needs to be done than to be told what to be done. None of us want to be told. And so we're going to send them to table discussion to clubs. Where can we start a new club? And at that table, they're beginning to talk and say, you know, I know Jim, who I went to college with, that lives in that town 10 miles down the road, that I think he, he could help us get a club started in XYZ City. And someone else says, need a Lions Club and who they know. And they're going to report that out and you're going to be jotting that down. Because if you have those personal contacts, when you go into that community, start that club, it's so much easier to start it because the community leaders are already engaged in wanting to help you to start that Lions Club. And then ask about a specialty club. And when we talk about specialty clubs, they're going to talk about diabetes clubs. They're going to talk about motorcycle clubs. They're going to talk about friends of the library clubs. They're whatever it is, you're listening. Because then, as they're reporting back out, and someone says, I think we should have a friends of the library. They're, they're real good, but... They, they're, they just don't know how to raise funds very well. And uh, if they were a Lions Club, they, they could raise funds as a Lions Club. And they're really focused just on library. But from time to time, they might need to be focused on a reading program in the school. And if there was a Lions Club, they could do that. And you're just listening because whatever they tell you is, is fantastic. Have you noticed there's no bad ideas and there's no we've already tried that. It's we're, everything is important. And then they're going to ask, you're going to ask them what training and resources are needed for you to help us to form these clubs that you've mentioned. And they're going to tell you, I don't know how to form a club. Someone to have to teach me how to do that. And so when you get to focus area four, you know that you need to develop a new clubs 101 uh, program and invite everyone in the district that's interested to come to that meeting and start with. This is what we do when we form a club. This is what we say. These are the people we're looking for. This is what we need people to do in the background of, of inputting information. This is what we need to mentor officers. This is what we need in order to uh, start a new club. And people get excited when we give them the tools and, the, and we equip them and we empower them to be successful. And then you're going to get down to the last goal here and says district and you fill in your district number before the meeting. We'll charter blank lines closed by June 2021, which, which in your area will be 2022. So you've changed that. And you, you ask people at the tables, how many clubs do you think we can start? And they say, I don't know. And you say, well, I've looked at the five-year average. In the last five years, we've started three clubs. How many do you think we can start this coming year? You're going to have one table that's overly ambitious. says, well, if we started three in the last five years, I think we can start three this year. Not a silly idea. You just move to the next one and you let them all tell you what they, they think. And then you as the facilitator guide the discussion toward a consensus. Well, table one said three. Tables two and three said one. Table uh, two said two. Would you all be okay if I told Lions International we do one and then we know that we're going to stretch and do, try to do two? And if we finish that early enough, we may be able to go all the way to three with table four over here. What do y'all think of that plan? And most of them, once you toss out the plan as a facilitator, are going to say, yeah, that's doable. Let's promise one. Let's commit ourselves to doing two. And if possible, we'll stretch and get three. That way, the district leaders that have come together to build a vision have, have done the goal. And so no one says, well, the district governor wants us to start two clubs. 
district governor don't want to do anything that you don't want to do. Your visionaries, the ones that you sent to that meeting to help us to, to draw up this plan, said that we're going to promise one and we're going to deliver two. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we're, we're, it, this is an easy process. It, it, it's going to make your job so much easier. And then we're going to talk about bringing members into existing clubs. Why do we invite people to join our club? Once again, when they're talking about that at their table, they are taking and selling themselves on the concept that it's important to bring people into our clubs. What's the best way to, for a club to add new members? And they're going to begin to tell one another what's worked in their club. So they're teaching one another at the tables about the different things and methods that have worked. You know, we went back and, and looked at the members that dropped in the last five years and some of their circumstances changed and we've invited them to come back and join us. And we picked up three members doing that last month. <clears throat> Someone else can say, we went to the Lions website and there was that membership growth event toolbox. And we went through that and we hosted that and we brought in four members about four months ago. And they're going to begin to tell us things at their tables. And then when they report out, the whole group's going to know those things and we're beginning to find the tools that we need to share to be successful in focus area two. And ask them, how often do you have a membership growth event? Now, why do we call it a membership growth event instead of a membership drive? Well, here in the South, usually we drive cattle. And if you're not careful, it appears that if you have a membership drive that someone has a target on their head and we're looking to uh, get them and drag them in a headlock to join the Lions Club. But if we have an event and we invite them to that event, whether that's a Valentine's Day party, a Memorial Day picnic, a service project, it takes the pressure off of them being singled out for membership. We're just letting them learn and discover for themselves that we're a group that they want to be part of. And they're going to begin to ask us, how do we become part of the group? And then what training or assistance is needed? And these visionaries are going to tell you, what they believe their district and their club needs in order to be able to bring more members in. You're going back to your five-year trends and say, in the last three years, we brought in 100 members, we brought in 110 members, and we brought in 95 members. How many members do you think that we can bring in? And whatever that average is, maybe increase it by about 5% and get them to, to do that. Go from table to table, and once again, someone's going to say, we got 1,150 members and we need to be at 1,250 we're going to have a net growth of 100, okay? We've not ever done that in the past, but if that's, that's good. We're going to listen to that. We're not going to tell them we've never done it in the past, and we're going to let the other tables, and someone's going to say, I think we can add 50 before we have our drops, or we're going to add 75, and you're going to reach that consensus number again. And a SMART goal is realistic. That's the most important and attainable. And so we need a realistic goal and an attainable goal. It's all right to reach your goal early and then set a stretch goal. Let them tell you that we can add 100 members. And when you get to 100 members added to existing clubs, celebrate and see if we can do another 25 or can we do another 50. And then we're going to talk about retention. We're going to send the groups back to their tables. Now, once again, they're talking at the tables for about 10 minutes. They're reporting out to you in about five to 10 minutes. This is the longest part of the process, but it's the most important part of the process because it's the goal setting and everyone coming together. How do you know a line is engaged? Why is new member orientation important? They're selling themselves on the concept of orientating new members. How do hands-on service projects help retain members? We're helping them to understand that we're more than writing checks. We've got to get out there and get our hands dirty. How can we re-engage members who have stopped participating in club activities. They're out there. They're talking at their tables. They're selling themselves on the concepts. And then we get back together. We say that in the last five years, we've averaged dropping 105 members. We've only averaged bringing in 100. And so we've been going down minus five, minus five, minus five. How can, what can we set this goal if we really try to engage all of our members and improve membership satisfaction through service and fellowship do you think we can reduce this minus 100 to a number less than that? And once again, you're going to have a variety of people from very energetic that says, we can cut that in half to someone who says, 
I don't know if we can do, cut it in half. Why don't we just leave it like it is? And you are going to continue to talk and facilitate this meeting till you get to about a 5% uh, better retention rate. If you were to drop in 100, let's shoot for 95. Can we do that? Let's shoot for 95. And if we get 95, we'll shoot for 90. And everyone then begins to understand how that drops and adds offset one another. Because then at the at nine months into the year, if you've dropped 125 and you've only, you've only brought in 100, you say, listen, we're, we've missed this goal over here and we've dropped 25 extra. Can we work together to bring in 25 more members so that we can offset that loss that, that's excessive? And they'll understand that and they'll work with you. And then finally, focus area four is club support. And you notice that the each, at the end of each of the first three, we've asked, what training do you need? What tools do you need? And those then are coming back over here. And your tables are discussing what programs, seminars, or training should be offered to club officers. What's the best format to deliver that training? In-person, Zoom, hybrid, the Learn Center with Lions Clubs International. Uh, what's, the, what's the best way for us to do that? And if a district hosted a Lions Leadership Institute, who should attend? And they're going to begin to identify people in their club to attend uh, a leadership institute, or I like to call them a Lions Learning Institute. And that way, it takes the pressure off of someone thinking they've got to take a leadership role if they finish. Let's just have a learning institute. Let's bring together people together just to learn about our association and how to better serve their communities by helping their club to learn best practices. And what other types of support can be provided to our leaders? The people that are there are gonna tell you and tell your GLT what kind of seminars, what kind of webinars that you need to host. And I'm gonna tell you, maybe even on, on a bi-monthly or quarterly basis via Zoom and invite every lion in the district to, to participate. But if we had six one-hour training sessions throughout the year via Zoom and Lions volunteered and come and listened, would that strengthen our district? I think it would. When you get to this point, the tough question is, what, what is your passion? Because I, as a district leader and the district governor team, wants to take your passion and your purpose and align it with the vision that we've come together today. I want each of you to take out a piece of paper, or I want each of you to put in the chat box uh, where that you would like to work. Focus area one, new clubs. Focus area two, members into existing clubs. Focus area three, uh, ret retention through new service and fellowship, or focus area four, supporting our district and our club leaders. Let me know where you are because we're going to assign you to those teams and we're going to ask you to take the information we've gathered today and help us to build out a plan of action so that we can all work together because it's gonna take everyone. You got another quote there and you're coming back and talk about it, it's all hands on deck. We need every club, every zone, every district, every multiple district. We need our global action team. We need our past district governors. We need our past directors, our past presidents. We need our international directors, everyone to help us to achieve this goal of growing members in our district. Now, we're going to step through the, the rest of this fairly quickly. You're going to write the, the four different plans. You're going to put them together. You're going to review it, and you're going to continue uh, to communicate it. I am so sorry. Y'all have been such a great group. I've got so excited, and I probably have gone over just a few minutes. And so questions, comments, or concerns, you can type them in the chat box. You can ask them out loud. We're here for you for the next few minutes. Richard, I put him to sleep. <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm excited for what you good. just talked about. I think you did a heck of a job. I appreciate it. I, I tried to reduce three and a half hours to 75 minutes, and it's easy and it's fun. And so, thank you very much, Flan Jim. Uh, questions, I, comments, I concerns? It. Just a comment on my end. Um, I can say our district uh, 
you know, our district is, you know, like I was explaining in, our, in my group just now, the breakout room, we, we are 60 clubs, but in 22 countries. Mm -hmm. There are no bridges. Everything is, you know, flying and different cultures, different, you know, um, nationalities. But uh, what I can say is um, the NAMI program, our district adopted it this year. And we started just with a NAMI, uh, a NAMI leader. Um, but we already went through the different, you know, focus areas in the meantime. I personally, as first vice president governor, was part of the focus area group four, and actually, the NAMI program in my in, in the next dynastic year is actually going to be one of my focus areas. Um, and actually, instead of having just a coordinator, we're actually having an entire group that will focus on that. So. It's uh, very important. So yes, uh, what you gave tonight uh, is a lot of additional extra information, which is great. Thank you. Claudio, thank you so very much. And remind me where you are, which district? Is it MD60? Yes, MD, uh, well, yes, part of MD60, but I'm, I'm from 60B. So- uh, Okay, and that's with my friend Miriam. Yeah, Maureen, yes. And so Maureen, anything yes. you need from the Global Action Team, we're here to help you. Any other yeah. final questions, comments, or concerns? You, because you can always put in the chat box. Richard Castillo will put his address in the chat box. And uh, he's on staff, and he can forward it to, to me, and we're going to help you. Uh, I am so excited that we've had this time together. And I hope that you understand that this is an easy process. All you got to do is ask questions and listen, and then take the data that you've gotten and build it into a plan of action, taking the lowest hanging fruit and improving your district, and then handing your district off to, to the next person behind you, let them take the lowest hanging fruit and improve. And in five years from now, we're gonna have restored the reputation of CA1 as the birthplace of Lions Clubs International. We're and good night. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lion Jerome. Oh, Before thank everybody you. Everybody leaves. Um, be on the lookout for the webinar for next month on April 19th. We're going to have uh, resources and tools and funding opportunities that would be available for all Lions to help you on your, 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 your global membership approach plans. That's so you guys could have all the support you guys will need to be successful throughout your year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.